What's up guys, Stark here, and so is Dead Heat, and that is the new summer event, and with it comes a whole bunch of characters. I believe there is eight new characters coming to the game in the next month or so, so I'm going to go ahead and break it down character by character, but for this video, I'm going to mainly be talking about the new banner that came out, and that is going to be the gotcha for the first batch of summer units or I guess it's technically the third batch but it would be the first new batch for this year there will be a second batch after this one ends or before this one ends but like later on in a couple weeks uh, anyway though it introduces four new characters into the game and they're all the summer characters as you would expect and uh, the batch is is very very good uh, honestly speaking I think this is probably one of the better summer batches if you go from top to bottom Obviously, it's headlined by the five-star caster Nero, who I'm sure is a fan favorite to a lot of people, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to be pulling just to get uh, Nero, but the question is whether or not is she good or not, and I, I know a lot of people aren't going to care because it's Nero and they want to pull for her, and that's awesome, but uh, good for you guys, Nero is actually really good. So I obviously won't be talking about her too much in depth here. That will be saved for the character spotlight, which should be following this video, or it might come out roughly the same time, maybe a little bit before, depending on how, you know, the YouTube uploads go. But that will be coming very, very shortly. Uh, but like I said, she's very, very good. She's got three amazing skills, and she's got a really unique skill here that I do want to touch on a little bit. And it allows her to basically negate her class weakness, which I believe is unique to her, or if not, is very limited and you know maybe a few servants in Japan have it but I don't think any other character in global has it at the moment so it's a very unique skill and you know it doesn't just do that it also increases her attack and her defense so that's really cool uh, she's got some really good damage output obviously she's a caster so it's not gonna be like amazing and let you know if she was a different class then you know be so much better but she could do some really good damage she has a very strong noble phantasm which is good for farming and she can fire it off very quickly and multiple times, so you're definitely going to be able to do a lot of wave clearing with that. And she's got a really good, well all of her skills are really good honestly, uh, but her third skill allows her to give guts to an ally and also increase their attack for three turns. And the attack bonus is at max level 50%, so you're going to get a ton of attack increase and you also have that chance to revive with 1 HP if they're killed. And then uh, might as well talk about her first skill, being able to charge her own Noble Phantasm. So, a very well-rounded character. Uh, she is a caster, so she does kind of fight with all the other really good casters for play. But the difference between her and most other casters is she's more of a damage-oriented caster as opposed to support. So if you need a little bit of extra boost against assassins, instead of taking in like a Berserker or some other character that gets a bonus, you might be able to take in Nero and, and get some pretty good damage. So it's a very viable option. And it's Nero, so what more reason do you need to pull for it? Outside of that though, uh, there are three four-star characters also in the banner. The first one being Frankenstein, who will be repackaged as a Saber instead of her normal Berserker. And uh, I did forget to mention it, although I did mention it. Uh, Nero, this is the third version of Nero. So the first two versions are Sabers, the four-star and the Bride Nero are Sabers. And she switches from Saber to Caster. Anyway though, for Frankenstein, as I said, she goes to Saber. And she gets some pretty cool uh, upgrades as well with a very interesting skill set. Um, all of her skills do negative effects to her, which at a glance is kind of like, oh, well, you know, that kind of sucks. I'm not going to use this character. But she's got some really good options here. Um, one of her skills will be able to reduce or remove the enemy's buffs completely. So obviously in like big boss fights where they just buff themselves like crazy, you could just go ahead and bring in Frankenstein and just get rid of those buffs it also will reduce their attack for three turns as well so you know that's gonna be some really good effects right there and you know the negative effect is only 500 damage which isn't really that big of a deal you know you can just take that that's like one turn of a black rail so most of the effects aren't really that bad so you can kind of get around them uh, her other skills she has the ability to increase her own noble phantasm generation for three turns Although this one, you do lose your own Noble Phantasm gauge, so that's not that great, but you do get an 80% increase to your Noble Phantasm generation, so 
it'll pretty much offset it when you just go ahead and use your attacks that turn. Uh, as long as you plan around it and you don't just use it carelessly, you'll be doing some, some good things there for that. And then her final skill will just buff up her own attack, no phantasm strength, for uh, three turns. Pretty good bonuses off both of those effects. You're going to get 20% for three turns. Uh, you will do burn damage to yourself. You know, so that's kind of unfortunate. But overall, very well-rounded set of skills. And then she does have a pretty good normal phantasm as well, being able to stun enemies. Although the rate for stunning isn't that good, so it can kind of screw you up a little bit if it does proc when you're not expecting it to. Like a 20% chance to proc one of the stuns is really nothing to count on. And more often than not, it won't you know, actually proc. Um, but it's still there. And you also do have an additional chance to stun an enemy on the overcharge. So you can do a lot of good stuns, but the chances are very low, which kind of drags it down a little bit. Overall though, if for nothing else, getting the buff removal is, is going to be very helpful. If you don't have a character like that, I would definitely suggest getting this character. Next up, we're going to talk about Nitocris, who is going to change from a castle to an assassin. And she's basically a tank. So she's a tank that can produce critical stars, really. Uh, she has a very, very good defensive skill in her first skill, just massively stacking her defense up I don't know the exact percentages but like she'll she'll increase it by a significant margin really so you get 30% for your the regular increase and then you'll get a further 30% on top of that so you're gonna get a lot of damage resistance right there and she also does have a taunt so you can combine the two skills together in order to take the heat off of your allies it's going to be very beneficial for you and that taunt skill, like, she has the huge defense increase, but the taunt skill actually will reduce the damage she takes. So, that combos really well. And it only does last for three attacks, but really, the taunt only lasts for one turn, so you only need the to take the attacks for one turn. So, it does its job very well. And she also does have a boost to her own attack as well, being able to increase her own attack and noble phantasm damage, as well as the generation. So... A really good tank that can do some pretty good damage and her noble phantasm will just be an aoe damage dealing noble phantasm it will decrease the defense of all of the enemies and it does have the chance to inflict death which should be pretty standard for nita chris so overall another very solid character uh, she does also have uh, some of the most not safe for work artwork in the game so i guess if you like that you can go for that and then finally, we have Oda Nobunaga coming in as a Berserker, changing from a Archer to a Berserker. And this is actually the first time you can pull for this character in the gacha. The other character is a Event Servant, who probably isn't coming back again. So this could be your first chance to get Nobunaga. She will come back again in the game later on as a different class. But for uh, all the people who don't play Japan, I won't say much more than that. Anyway though, she's a pretty good character, she's basically just going to be there to do damage, as most Berserkers are, but she does have a few different options at play. Uh, she could do some really good stuff with critical damage, being able to increase the amount of stars she gets, and she'll also be able to heal the entire team, which is really weird, but it works, she'll be able to recover her, her party's HP for 5 turns, as well as charging their party's normal Phantasm Gauge for five turns so she does kind of work as a support damage dealer which is really cool other than that she also has the ability to increase her own buster card effectiveness for three turns with an evasion and she will do extra damage on burning fields so i think this is a very well-rounded batch i guess uh, her noble phantasm just does really good damage to a single enemy and if that enemy is divine it'll do more damage but yeah, very solid batch. I, I would actually recommend pulling on this. Uh, you know, Nero aside, the batch is really good in my opinion, and there are definitely some really good options there. Um, obviously, it depends on who you have and what classes you need characters for, but I do think Nero is really good, and I also think Frankenstein is worth picking up just for the buff remover, unless you already have a character like that, then I would say pulling for those two characters is really good, and Nito Chris and Nobunaga are also really good characters in my opi own opinion. The other thing is, the next batch that comes out after this, uh, there's they're good characters, all the characters are good, but I do think I prefer this batch to the next batch. 
So uh, if you had to choose between one of them, it's basically down to Caster Nero or Rider Alter. So you pick which character you want the most and go from there. So me personally, I want to pull for both of them. And I'm sure my video is already pulled or posted on YouTube about my pulls. So you guys can check that out if you want. I had some really good luck, but I'm really hoping I can get Rider Alter as well. Uh, but as soon as that banner is actually announced, I will go ahead and make a similar video for that banner and give you guys the insight on that. But anyway, I guess the conclusion is I do give it my seal of approval. I do think you should pull on this banner if you do have the spare quartz and you're not saving for Rider Alter. I think all their characters are good and the craft essences will you know, help you for the event in order to get Ishtar, who is the event character for the event. So thanks for watching guys, uh, if you did like the video feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and as always I have the links below to my Twitter, Twitch, Patreon, and Discord, so feel free to check those out, and I will see you guys next time.